Okay, I think we can get started. Um, hello, everybody. Next up, we have Sangeeta Raghu Punati for uh, who's going to be talking about user onboarding, get the user on board. Over to you, Sangeeta. Thank you so much. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for attending this session. Uh, let's get started. So um, what, what sells your product? User looking at when they actually choose your product. Product value. How does the product help? Uh, how, how is the product going to help the user? Is it going to help them achieve their business goals? Um, how is the user experience? I mean, how easy or difficult would it be for their employees to sort of adopt your product? And do you have user onboarding or tips and tricks to help the users get started? So in this session, we shall be looking at the what, how, why of user onboarding. As always, let's begin with the textbook definition. So Wikipedia says, uh, user onboarding is the process of improving a person's success with a product. So um, what it means, it's, it means helping the users use your product without too much of effort. Um, it means uh, they don't have to go around looking for help when they're using your product. Rather, your product is intuitive enough or has enough help inside to keep them moving. Uh, it also means, uh, talks about uh, uh, the users reaching their aha moment. So what's, aha, what's an aha moment? Uh, it's a moment of sudden insight or discovery. Uh, the point at which your user is going to understand the value your product brings in. So if I want to convert a doc file into a PDF, the moment I convert it into a PDF, I have my aha moment. I know exactly how your product is going to help me. So let's break this up a bit. So when a user comes to your product, they come with a lot of apprehensions. Is this application going to help me? How do I get started? Am I going to achieve my goal? So every time we try something new, we have a lot of questions. We have a lot of fear. So an answer would be to make the journey more easier for the user, right? So the answer to all these questions is providing good user onboarding. So what does user onboarding actually do? It sort of provides a starting point for your users to use your software or your product. It helps the user get started. Um, imagine that a user is trying to use a trial version of the, of the application and they just can't get started. So they will leave the product and go to some other product. So it's very important that we have good guidance or pointers to help the users get started. How do you get the users started? You could, use your mess you could use messages, tool tips. You could use a combination of animated GIFs, regular GIFs, product tours to help the user get started. So before we get into the details of user onboarding, let's look at an example so that we all are on the same page. So this is, a, uh, this is the homepage of an application called as Canva, which is used to create graphics. Now imagine I'm a first time user and I come to the screen, I would be intimidated, I would be scared, and I just don't know where to start. So what does Canva do? The screen that actually comes up once you log in for the first time in Canva is this screen. So if you see here, they have categorized uh, according to uh, the user personas or uh, the user requirement. So if you're a teacher, what sort of graphics you can create? If you're a student, what kind of graphics you can create? So based on the persona, they have various templates available. So as a first time user, it's easier for me to choose, right? So say I choose personal. So the next screen that comes up is this. So what is the onboarding statement that Canva is trying to tell us that we are going to help you create your first design. We're going to handhold you so that you understand how to use our application. And by the end of this, you have your first graphics or, uh, or, or, or a design created. Now, if I click presentation here, I come into this uh, presentation space. And uh, what Canva has done is uh, to, uh, to help the user understand their application better, they have created a product tour. So a product tour is, is actually a tour of your product. 
So on the click of next button, I'm going to go from one bubble to the next, and that's going to help me understand or navigate the UI. So by the end of this, end of this hand holding, I would have created my presentation. So now I know how, how to work with Canva. I know how the application uh, looks like. And the next time I log in, I go back to the home screen, the first screen that I showed with, with all the graphic images. But now I'm not scared. I understand the product better and I, it, I can create my designs on my own. So where can you, uh, how can you onboard the user? So you can onboard them in the application and you can onboard them out of the application. So within the application, uh, you could use your welcome screens, your tool tips, uh, product tours, some indicators on the UI to onboard the user. And out of, out of the application, it's going to be more text. It's going to be a help topics, your promotional emails. So together, the in-app and the external onboarding artifacts should have a common goal of helping the user use understand your application better, uh, use your product in a better way. So in short, um, you have artifacts in your application. You have some amazing functionality in your application. So you're going to link these functionalities to the artifacts and have interaction with the, uh, with the users at regular intervals. For example, Canva. So what did they do? They already had templates created. They just, and categories created. In the starting, they just added a new uh, dialogue with these categories so that it's easier for the user to choose. They could have left the user on the home page, but they, you know, they, they thought it would be a better way, easier for the users if, if they have a, a window that sort of uh, shows off all the categories. So that's what we need to think, how we can link our application to our existing artifacts. So if you have web-based application, uh, these are a list of uh, some onboarding platforms. Uh, they are a combination of proprietary and open source. Um, they have some really, really good uh, onboarding. You can create really good onboarding artifacts. So all the artifacts that I'm going to be talking about today can be created by using these applications. Um, the proprietary applications are available as uh, browser extensions and uh, the open source ones would require a little bit more of uh, programming knowledge. So even if you don't want to like invest maybe in these applications, do check out their trial versions because they give you a very good idea about what sort of onboarding artifacts you can create. So let's begin by understanding how do we create an onboarding strategy. So everything is going to be begin with a business goal. So what business goal do you want to achieve with a particular onboarding strategy? For example, Canva, their onboarding strategy was to help the user create their first graphic. So how do you analyze? So once you've decided the user goals, you're going to see for that goal, what are the user personas? So what are your user personas? What are, what are your user? What is the user journey for those personas? What is the technical level of your users? So once you have this data, you're going to sit together and think which user persona and which user journey is going to require onboarding. So for example, say you have admin tasks and you have end user tasks. So for, for an administrator, which tasks do you think are going to require onboarding strategy? What functionality or what use case would a, would a user require help with? So you're going to sit back, think about it. If you have analytics, you could use analytics uh, to decide the functionalities where you want to create onboarding strategy. Say you, uh, your users are churning out at a, in, at a particular functionality, uh, you create an, a, a strategy around that. So once you have your onboarding strategies in place, um, discussions with your stakeholders, you create the strategy, publish it, but uh, you keep reviewing your onboarding strategy because every time you have a new feature or a new uh, a release out, you may have to change it. So we'll, we'll be talking about the shelf life of onboarding uh, artifacts as well. 
So let's look at the type of users that you can address. So typically in an application, you're going to have three, three, users, three types of users. First time users are the users who come into your application for the first time. So an onboarding strategy here would be to help them get started. Basic users, uh, the onboarding strategy here would be to make them into power users. And of course, applications might have power users. And here the onboarding strategy would be to help them discover more complex features and help them use the product even better. So once a user decides to use a particular application, they are always in a hurry to get started. Uh, so since, uh, if we continue with the example of wanting to create a PDF from a doc file, I go to the internet, I search for an application, I download it, and now I want to, uh, the next thing I want to do is just create my PDF. I don't want to waste too much of time filling in forms or trying to uh, configure it. So most applications these days uh, uh, use single sign-on. So you can use your Google account or your Facebook account to sort of get, get into any application. So the strategy here would be to give access to your product as soon as possible. So once the user has access to your product, the first screen that they're going to see is the welcome screen. And a lot of times, you know, we can sort of ignore the welcome screen or the welcome dialog box. It's just like welcome to product uh, ABC or version one, two, three. No, you could probably do a little more with your welcome screen. Let's see how. So as I said, this is the first interaction user is going to have with your application. A uh, lot of emphasis these days is on personalization. So you could welcome the users with their name. Um, show, reiterate the product value because that sort of uh, uh, helps the user, makes the user more sure of, you know, uh, what this product does. So uh, give a line that, that actually tells you what is it is that, what is the business goal you can achieve with this particular product or the USP of your product list a couple of more functionalities of your product so apart from, so say i have come to your product to do a particular task and if you list say i can do b and c as well as a user it sort of helps me realize that okay i can use this product for doing these other tasks as well um, you could use a combination of image and text really good micro copy uh, use the voice and tone of your organization. So everything in the welcome screen should talk uh, talk about your product as your product would speak to the user. And in the welcome screen, you can actually split um, the users, the onboarding based on user persona or user journey. For example, admin tasks versus uh, end user tasks. So this split the same way as Canva did you could do it in your welcome screen. So let's look at some examples. So this is the welcome screen from Dropbox. So what they have done is they have used floating windows or scrolling windows, and they also have added an animated GIF insight to sort of show how the application works. So they have, a pro, uh, they have the functionality uh, listed up there. They have good graphics, and uh, they also have given a link to the intro video. So you don't have to actually go and create a video if you have an existing marketing video that would work as well because the user here just wants to know how to get started and just uh, understand uh, what is it that your product brings uh, in their organization. So once you, once you click the get started button, you're going to get into the uh, Dropbox application. So what does Dropbox do to help you further? They have a new for you window here, and this window slides out only on the click of an arrow. So it's not going to interfere in their actual application. And here they have listed whatever is new in the release. They don't stop there. They also have used animated GIF to actually show how you're going to achieve that. And they have a call to action buttons that actually start uh, that actually start that functionality. So you can actually download Dropbox from here, or you can actually create a shared folder from this window as well. 
so they don't expect you to sort of go and search for share a folder uh, button or uh, command in the application rather you can get started just right here so that's a very good example of onboarding the user just in time in the place where they are right now uh, this is a screen from red hat so when you get into the insights uh, dashboard you can see that you have a couple of lines that tell you what does insight actually do and it also helps the user get started so they tell you if you want to begin these are the commands that you need to use and if you need give some more information here is a link to our getting started documentation So this this pattern that I have used in my um, in my presentation shows what you can do after you go back. Um, sort of a takeaway slide. So for if if welcome screens, what can you do better in your welcome screens? Add what value your product brings in. Uh, use some good text and images. Um, good micro copy to create the function, uh, the value that your product brings. Uh, list a couple of functionalities. As I said, you could use a uh, give a link to your video so that it's easier for the users who don't want to sort of go and read through all the text. Uh, you could give a link to the product tour. We're going to see that next. And uh, wherever possible, always give a link to help documentation or your learning management system because that's, that's where the users are going to get more information. So let's look at a demo of a product tour first and then we'll talk about it. So product tours are actually um, guide the users in your application and uh, you can actually ask the users to interact with your application in a product tour so that by the end of it, they have achieved a goal. So in this video, we're going to see how to create a, a task in Gmail. So if you see here, the user is actually expected to click the icon. So the, the instructions that are given to the user are click the task icon. So once the user clicks the task icon, uh, the application is of course invoked in Gmail because that's what it does. And then the user is asked to click the add, uh, add a task button. After that, actually write the task that you want to, uh, want to add to the list. And after that, we have further gone and shown them how to complete a task as well. So, um, and, and at the end of this, you can also ask feedback if this tour was good or bad. So I created this tour using Wordfix, which is a propri proprietary software. But in short, you can, you can actually use product tools to help the users uh, interact with your software. So with product tools, you can provide guidance on how to use your use your application. They are action oriented because at the end of it, you would have achieved a user goal. So in, in the example that we saw, we actually created a task. So that way, if you have any any um, any functionality that you want the user to complete or a business use case, you could actually create a product tool to help the users achieve that particular goal. And you could create it for your first time users, basic users, different personas. So if you use the onboarding platforms, you can actually list all the product tours in a window and, and sort of display it in your application. Uh, a common use of product tours is to highlight new features because it's new. The users haven't seen it before and having a product tour where you actually guide them the clicks uh, and the configurations on your UI would help them understand the functionality better. And uh, with product tools, don't try to make it too complicated. Uh, achieve, you know, stick to that one user goal that you want to achieve because sometimes you can do two, three things and that's only going to confuse your user. So what do you do after you go back? So if you decide to invest in um, in the platforms or you uh, decide to um, use some coding knowledge to create product tours, uh, definitely have a getting started tour uh, product tour. So getting started product tour is a tour that's automatically invoked 
the first time the user uh, comes into your application. So it's going to take the user around your application and, and sort of show the different features that are available. If you don't want to invest in product tours, you could use animated GIFs the same way as Dropbox did. So you record a small animated GIF and when the user invokes a particular functionality, uh, you, could, uh, you could open up this window so that the animated GIFs keeps playing and the users can use that as a reference to sort of navigate in your UI. You could keep that optional as well. Uh, you, know, you could ask the user that do you want to see an animated GIF? So, you know, it's, it's totally up to you how you would want to do it, but you could use animated GIFs to sort of guide your users as well. Uh, tool tips, uh, you know, you have any onboarding artifact tool, big tool tips are a must have because they uh, are the best guidance that you can provide uh, for the users. And if you use product tours, if you use the applications listed, uh, you could link videos, documentation, everything in that product tour. So the third artifact that we're going to look at is task list. So nowadays, if you see every time you log in, log in to a new application, they have a getting started short list. So these are list of tasks which, which uh, you are expected to complete so that you better understand the product. And as you complete that, you can see you, you get a check mark and you get a percentage. So this is nothing but a list of tasks which at the back end is actually linked to your existing functionality. So let's look at how we can use task lists. So these are tasks that you list sequentially. The hope is that the user would follow those tasks in a particular sequence, but not necessary. So you keep them in a sequence, but they should not be like interdependent on each other. The user should have the flexibility of beginning with whichever task they want. So what we are trying to do by creating a task list is sort of giving the users a direction as to how to use the product. You're trying to show them the best way of using your product. Since these, uh, you are expected to, uh, since you are expected to, uh, you you expect the users to use these uh, to uh, to run these tasks, run through these tasks as soon as they uh, log into your software. Don't keep them very complex. Keep them simple. And show completion status because you know as as humans we 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 love to see a tick mark and a hundred percent. So use that as a motivation for the users to complete the tasks. Um, give them small rewards, you know, for completion of tasks. Need not be something big, you know, an applause or a balloon or a clap also makes us happy. So just keep them motivated so that they they complete their task list because then it will help them understand the product better. And as with all onboarding um, artifacts, you know, you, you should be able to just cross and not, not, not worry about the task list. So onboarding artifacts, you got to take it with a pinch of salt. Sometimes uh, the user may or may not use it, but when they need help, you have to be around. So, so that's, that's like your help documentation as well. So they might not go and read it every day, but when they need help, they go to your documentation. So what can you do after you go back? Um, you could use uh, counters in your installers and, um, and login screens uh, because then it gives an idea as to how much how much time more you know do I need to invest to actually uh, finish the installation. So if I want to go for lunch, do I wait for the installation to get over or I come back and do it? So it kind of helps the user make up their mind. Uh, task list, good to have because it's going to give the users a direction and it's easy to create because you already have your existing functionality. You just need to figure out what needs to go into that task list. Uh, progress bars you could use to either track the completion rate of your task list or if you have, um, if you want the users to give them, to give you more information about uh, themselves, their profile, you could, you could use those uh, 
you could use the a track bar, track bars to track those details as LinkedIn does. It says your profile is 50% complete. So, you know, sort of motivate the users. So numbers always motivate us. So you use it to our advantage. And as always, videos and documentation is something you can always add. So in short, what can a simple onboarding example look like? So you have a welcome screen. You split them by persona, say admin and end user. And say I click admin task, admin. Um, so for an admin, you have a task list ready wherein you have four or five tasks which you expect them to complete. And, uh, and you can link uh, actually, you can actually you, uh, create product tours and list them as tasks, or you could use tooltips to guide the user. So if that's too confusing, just create a task list. Uh, let's look at some other onboarding artifacts that are available. So you can, you, if you don't have anything else, you could use overlays. So I'm sure all of us have seen this sort of an overlay. So it's like a transparent screen on top of your application and uh, the overlay is going to just point arrows to the various uh, commands or functionality that's available uh, in your user interface. Tool tips, as I said, your best friends, so always, always have them. Uh, hotspots are these, this spot that keeps flashing. So wherever you want to get user attention, you could use this. Um, you could also use this to indicate a new feature in your UI because that sort of gets lost and uh, you you write it in your help documentation but you know the user needs to see the icon match it in the UI and then understand hey this is something new so instead of that you could use a hotspot to indicate new features or new functionality in your application and in the app oops in the app messaging is something that we already see a lot of upgrade related information or updates are pushed by various organizations with this with these with the pop up windows that you see coming up uh, in your application saying that hey uh, the product has been upgraded we don't support this java so those sort of uh, messages could be sent by uh, in app messaging so we have been looking at um, how to onboard the user within the application. Let's see how we can do it outside the application. So as I said, this is going to be more text based. So you could use your promotional and triggered emails to um, to help your users understand your product better. So what are triggered emails? So triggered emails are emails that are triggered because of a user action. So say I have subscribed to your newsletter. Um, so the triggered email would be an welcome email that comes to my mailbox. So in your promotional and triggered emails have your customer uh, testimonials, some use cases so that it, it helps your could be users or your prospective users understand how your product is going to help solve their business problems. Uh, all organizations send out uh, product release emails. So uh, list what's new in the release, um, give information, uh, be elaborate. Don't expect them to go back and see your help documentation because sometimes users make a decision based on, you know, based on one artifact sometimes. Um, and if you have link, if you have created videos or tutorials for those new help features, Try to add them in your uh, in your product release emails because then every all the information related to that release is available at one place, uh, say for the sales manager or the CTO to sort of see see everything in one place. Help topics, um, help uh, help documentation is used as pre sales uh, for pre sales research. So if an organization is trying to uh, decide which product to use or uh, which product to invest in. They're going to look at everything that's available in the market. So they say there are 10 products. So it's humanly impossible to download 10 products and see what features are available, right? So which is the easiest place where you're going to see a list of all the features that are available. Of course, the help documentation. So ensure that you put in a little bit of thought and effort in your help documentation, because that's also something that's going to help you sell your product. And uh, 
and a pointer is from from all of these uh, external onboarding artifacts have a call to action button to your download page because you know maybe the user would be motivated to at least look at your trial version and this is my last slide so um, as promised we're going to look at the shelf life of onboarding artifacts so um there are going to be some permanent artifacts like your tooltips are not going to change uh, if you have a getting started tour unless you have added something really uh, important or something that you want to showcase your getting started tour is more or less set uh, your basic task list more or less is not going to change so these could be some of your uh, permanent deliverables now based on your product adoption rate based on your support analytics you may have, you can change uh, certain existing uh, onboarding artifacts say for example product tours so if you have if your product adoption rate is pretty quick so release on release you can create product tours for new features and remove the uh, product tours of the previous releases um but say your product adoption rate is a little slower so you cannot remove all the product tours from the previous releases you may want to retain some important ones so it's your product uh, you know your end users uh, based on that decide where what artifacts fits best what content fits best so if you think that you can onboard or guide your users with tooltips then just do it with tooltips if you think that an additional window with an animated gif is going to help the user think if that you know you could add in there uh, can you categorize or make it easier for the users to choose between different categories can you create a window with 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 different category options makes it easier for the users to choose so give it a thought uh, i'm sure by now you would have realized that user onboarding cannot be an afterthought so you will have to start thinking about user onboarding uh, when you start doing your product documentation so i hope that you know you you have some ideas about what you can do after you go back um, these are some of the references um, all the onboarding platforms that i spoke about have got really good material um do check them out um i did a presentation on micro copy and animated gifs so if you want to like look check them out i'll be happy and i'm ready for q and a if you have any questions and thank you so much for listening for such a long time thank you for the amazing talk sangeeta um uh, guys please feel free to drop in and chat with any questions that you have thank you dom If you don't have any questions, we're good. <laughs> I think everything was very clear for the audience. Um, there is also a breakout room link, uh, which I'm just going to post in the chat. So please feel free to hop in there even after this talk if you want to directly um, reach out to Sangeeta. I hope you can hang out there for a couple of minutes. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for the talk again. Thank you so much for all your coordination and help. Thank you everybody. No problem. Bye. Bye.